Breaking the Mould, our regular look at the financial markets with investment director, Russ Mould. Hello, Russ. Hello, Clara. How are you? It's good to see you again. It's good to see you too. Pleasure. And I'm not too bad at all. Good. But there is something that I need to know. Tell me, tell me. Russ, what's the fuss? Okay, well, in the next couple of weeks, we've got three things coming up and they're going to be gaming, wafers and African oil. That's because we get full year or interim numbers from GVC, IQE and Bow 11. Mm, all sounding very exciting. Should we uh, take a punt and start off with GVC? Punt. Very good, very good, yes. Isle of Man based firm. Key brands are Sporting Bet, Casino Club and Bet Boo. And between them they offer online and mobile sports betting. Bingo, casinos and they do it here in the UK, Europe, South Africa and even Latin America. And the firm's due to report full year numbers on Monday the 23rd of March Although we've, always, we've already got a little bit of a feel for the figures after January's trading statement, which frankly was pretty upbeat stuff. The company reported strong increases in customer deposits, gaming revenues, sports wagering and margins. Mm, yeah, but we know that the punters always lose. Speak for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> Cheltenham? Ah, yeah, okay, well, yeah. moving uh, swiftly on. What are the risks here? Okay, regulation's probably the biggest one. GVC doesn't have a high street presence in the UK but it is still subject to a new point of consumption tax introduced by the British government, which applies to where the gambler's based, not the company. Now, the absence of a big sporting event in 2015, apart from Cheltenham, mm. is a bit of a handicap. No football World Cup, for example. And GVC is also heavily investing in its offering. But despite those startup costs and the new tax, management still seems pretty confident in the outlook, judging by their progressive dividend policy. Now, GVC has already flagged a healthy increase in the total payment for 2014 to around 52.5 euro cents. That's enough for a yield in the sort of 8.5 to 9% range. Now, as the chart shows behind us, the shares have actually come off a little bit, possibly because of the worries over the tax. So let's see if in the step there's any colour on the new levy's impact so far in 2015, where broker consensus is for full year profits pre-tax to come in broadly flat at the 45 million euro mark. Brilliant. Right, now that is gaming done. Let's move on to wafers and Welsh ones at that. Yeah, uh, very good. Uh, IQE is one of Cardiff's finest, though it also has operations in America and Asia as well. So the company provides semiconductors. Silicon chips is the common term, but what IQE does is actually anything but common. It provides specialist skills and services for very high-end products that go beyond bog basic chips, featuring materials such as gallium arsenide. If you think about it, it's arsenic, so it's poisonous. Mm. So this is really quite smart stuff. And those chips are used in smartphones, solar cells, light emitting diodes. It's all really high tech. And we've got results coming up on the 24th. Okay, Russ. Now, thanks for the chemistry lesson. I really needed that. Yes, all uh, right, What pleasure. should investors be looking for when it comes to the numbers? Well, that was pretty good for a history graduate to get in all that stuff about poisons. It was really great. Anyway, so the shares have broken a two-year slump, actually. Again, the chart behind us shows someone somewhere is getting excited, not just me about the mm. chemistry. January's trading statement confirmed full year expectations and boss Dr. Drew Nelson has flagged sales of around 112 million quid for the year that's just ended. Now, analysts are looking for pre-tax profits of around 15 million, but another figure to watch is net debt. After some acquisitions, it, is, it got quite high. It's now coming down to around the 31 million pound mark net. Now, the quicker the debts drop, in principle, the less risky the stock becomes and the more chance there is the company can forge a sustained profits recovery. Okay, finally, let's talk about Bo Levin's African Adventure. Yeah, really, really quickly. I mean, obviously, it's been a roller coaster for all oil stocks over the past few months. And again, oil price weaknesses weighed very heavily on the Explorer shares, although they have actually rallied from 23 to around 31 pence as crude has tried to stabilise. Again, there are fresh signs of weakness creeping in. Now, Bo Levin isn't actually producing yet, and completion of the 250 million US dollar farm out of its Etinde asset in Cameroon to Russia's Luck Oil is really, really important for the company's financial health and funding its exploration. Now, we should get the latest news here when Bolevin reports interims on Wednesday the 25th, and the focus has to be on that balance sheet. The company had $14 million in cash as of the end of October, plus an undrawn bank facility. Okay, thank you, Russ. Thank you. And thank you to you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.